Welcome to your six-month tarot reading. We are going to dive into the energies of the next six months, particularly because it is a very significant time frame for each of us, okay? So before we dive into it, I do want to, first of all, thank each one of you who have subscribed. I've reached over 100 subscribers. You know, my channel's new. So uh, every one of you that are um, that are appreciating this content, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. So those of you who have not yet subscribed, please do and hit the notification bell. Also, remember to like the video and make comments. Leave comments. I'd love to hear from you and get to know um, those of you who are interested in, in uh, what I'm bringing forward. So thank you again. Um, next, I would like to just let each one of you know that this intro will be in every one of your readings, okay? Because I do not want to potentially miss something as this information is so important uh, by repeating it 12 times, you know, that can get kind of redundant, first of all. And secondly, you know, as, um, you know, as it goes on, I may end up forgetting a piece or two. So we don't want that to happen. So typically I give each one of you your own special time in the beginning. Um, and But at this point, let's go ahead and just be all on one page because even though it's going to impact us differently and that's why, well, you'll each have a reading, right? Um, but it, the, but the, the energies are, are affecting all of us, okay? So the reason uh, this is so significant is because Chiron has just gone into retrograde. Now, every one of us has a Chiron placement in our chart, in our natal chart. Oh, I should also say, I am not an astrologer, okay? I am not. I am a tarot reader, but I am very sensitive to inf um, to current energies, okay? And, um, and when I feel the planet shifting, when I feel something significant, like I did this last December when Chiron went direct, um, I felt very impacted on looking at the Chiron wound. And many of you may be feeling very impacted by this Chiron retrograde. Okay. Um, and you may have been starting, may have been really dealing with your Chiron wound um, as of last December. It may have flared up for you, for you also. So what is the Chiron wound? What am I, what am I talking about? Um, so if you're not familiar, um, the Chiron wound is a wound that you would have had since birth. Okay. And it will have impacted you throughout your entire life. Now let's dive into Chiron's because we'll need to Chiron's story because we'll need to make some parallels here so that it really gives you the depth of what's going on. So um, Chiron was conceived in um, in a, a rape condition. Okay, so it was he was his mother was okay. So what happened is hmm, let's go let's go let's let's do this let's really chat. All right. So what happened was Saturn came to Earth to see his son Zeus or Jupiter. And he fell in love or was taken back, very much interested in a water nymph. And he pursued her and she just continued to not be interested in him and escaping him. So she comes to Zeus or Jupiter and asks him to turn her into a horse, a mare, um, so that she can get away from um, uh, Saturn. And so he does. Well, Saturn finds out and, and he turns himself into a stallion and he meets up with her and they produce a child. So when she when it's time for her to give birth, she goes up into the mountains and she births this child. And because they were, you know, had been horses at the time, she gave birth to a half human, half boy and half um, horse, half stallion. OK, so she was mortified uh, at this. Um, she was and she 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 was embarrassed. She did not want to uh, raise this child. So she abandoned him in a field. And um, she went back to Zeus and asked him to turn her into a tree. And he did. Um, so that's mom. Mom's out of the picture. But you can see where he was conceived in a trauma. And then at birth, he had a trauma. This is where it begins to parallel um, our lives, okay? Because you will have this in your chart, this wound that's been placed there. And you chose this at a soul level of what you wanted to really be an impact. Now, where this is really great is Chiron is also known as the wounded healer. So a shepherd found him in the field and takes him to the temple of Apollo. And Apollo and his sister Athena, Artemis, it's one. I am so sorry, you guys. I want to say Athena, but it could have been Artemis. Okay, so whoever is Apollo's sister. Okay, so they raised him and gave him an elite um, education. He learned prophetic abilities. 
He learned um, the healing arts and medicine. He learned um, uh, art itself and the beauty of, of art. And he learned um, the ways of a noble warrior where fighting is the last, um, the last option when it comes to um, war, okay? And he taught a lot of gods and heroes, which are demigods. He taught a lot of them throughout um, history and um, their Greek mythology, okay? So he taught, taught a lot of them. Later, he ended up sustaining an, his own physical wound, okay? He was in battle with Hercules. Um, they were on the same team. Hercules had an arrow that was, um, had been dipped in um, poison made by a god and had, you know, shot his target. And it went through the target and hit Chiron in either the thigh or the knee, depending on which story you're looking at. So she was wounded. And because he is a demigod, he could not, um, he could not die. And because it was a poison that was created by a, a, um, a god, uh, he could not heal it. So he asked for his immortality to be taken from him so that he could die from this wound. And so he did. Now, there's a, you know, another part of the story where it branches off and he sends, he sends um, Hercules to free Prometheus, which, I mean, it's, it, it, it kind of pertains because Prometheus is Aquarius energy, but we're not going to go into that. We, we could, but not today. Not today. Okay. So you know, we all know that Pluto is in Aquarius right now and Pluto is helping us to mine. Oh, it does. Ah, sorry. That's why it's coming up. Okay. See, this is why I didn't want to repeat it 12 times. Okay. So Prometheus is the, the energy of, um, is some, of Aquarius, okay? Prometheus had stole the fire back for man because he, according to Greek mythology, he created man so he was aligned not with the god of Zeus who took the fire uh, as punishment from man. He went actually to Apollo and got the um, fire back from the sun and gave it back to man, okay? So, and then... Uh, Zeus had him apprehended and tied him to change him to a pillar and had an eagle come and eat out his liver every day, repeatedly for forever, for eternity, or until um, a hero demigod came and rescued him or saved him. And so when Chiron, and I'm not sure exactly how one, you know, how it takes his immortality away, but it does. When he sends um, Hercules to um free Prometheus, because we know Hercules is a demigod. He's a hero. Uh, when he frees him, I, he's a, it, um, Chiron is able to then be mortal now, okay? And so he goes and he lives with the other centaurs, which were brutes. They come from a very different lineage, um, a dark lineage, and they um, were just kind of beasts. They were unruly. They obeyed no law, right? And they had their way. They would terrorize villages and had their way with women, drink too much, just kind of did their own thing at their own will. Well, Chiron went and lived with them for 700 years, and he was able to teach them um, all of the things that he had learned with his education with gods. And help to civilize um, to civilize these um, centaurs. And now we all, you know, in, in just you know, you know, broad strokes of uh, mythology. If you're not going too deep into it, you can see where centaurs are actually noble creatures in in, um, in many depictions. Okay, so this is how they got there was Chiron. Okay, so how does this affect you? Well, Chiron, your Chiron wound connects directly with your purpose, and we know Chiron's in Aries. We know that our North Node currently is in Aries, okay? And um, and as of last year's, is it last year's or this or both? I'm not sure. Anyway, as of the the um, the uh, eclipse of um, it was the eclipse that had to do with Aries and Libra, okay? Which is the where the North and South nodes are. It opens up this portal for us to be able to heal it, okay? Especially when Chiron, that was this last spring, okay? Chiron went direct last December. Now he's retrograde again, okay? And in his retrograde, he's retrograding with Pluto. That's why it was important for me to mention um, Aquarius energy because Pluto is in Aquarius. Now, just like just like Prometheus or Aquarius, um, has stolen the fire because he was back for man because he was aligned to his creation he was aligned to his own purpose um and not just obeying some godhead 
that's what Aquarius is asking each one of us to do is to be able to step into our authentic self and align ourselves with our own purpose, our own creations, the creation of your own life. Now, what does Pluto have to do with that? So Pluto is Hades, okay? Pluto is, um, and the reason why they have two names is if you don't, if you don't know is that Greek mythology, they have one name and Roman mythology was derived from Greek mythology is what all the planets are named after is the, um, is the Roman God names. Okay. So they're the same people. So, um, all right. So now, so, but their stories are just, you know, they, they're extended stories with the Roman mythology. Okay. So let's go back to Aquarius here. And this Aquarius energy now has, we know that Pluto went into Aquarius, right? As of earlier this year, finally went you know, to be, to stay there for a period of time. I think it's doing when a retrograde does, does, does touch back into um, Capricorn for just a moment. Um, but when it does go retrograde as Pluto retrogrades, it is going to create a conjunction with Chiron and Pluto, like I said, is Hades, which is your own personal, your own personal underworld. Now, that can sound a little bit scary going into your own personal hell, right? And and we can all agree that the wound that we've carried with our own life has been our own personal hell. Well, the beauty of Pluto is that Pluto mines the wealth that is under the surface, okay? So if Pluto is helping, so they're gonna literally gonna go, going to go conjunct in like the same degree, like 21 degrees, 20 degrees, and 19 degrees when they are doing this dance together, Pluto and Chiron. So as Chiron's in retrograde and as Pluto's in retrograde, and they're going to be, you know, like I said, doing this, Pluto's going to help you get underneath everything and help you to recognize where all of the skills, all of the talents, all of the things that you personally have been able to cultivate from a wounded state, just like Chiron did when he received his education. So, and re retrograde Chiron is going to help you take a look, re revisit that wound, but it's going to be in a very beautiful, harmonious way to help you release it once and for all to align you with your purpose. Okay. You're going, this is your Chiron, the wounded healer. As you, as you heal that wound, it becomes your biggest medicine. Your biggest wound throughout your life becomes your biggest medicine and becomes um, prevalent within achieving your own personal purpose, your own personal destiny, which is a promise that you made to yourself when you chose to come into this lifetime. Uh, so, so you can see how all these things are working together and the stories really parallel what's going on with their life. Now, as I've done a little bit of research, I have discovered that the Chiron wound can often be connected to the mother wound. So looking at where your moon is in your chart, the mother womb, wound, mother wound, by looking at the moon in your chart. Now, why the moon? Because the moon does represent mother, mother figure, the maternal aspects within each of us, the mother figures that we have had in our life, you as a mother figure to other people, whatever that looks like for you. But this wound, this Chiron wound may have something to do with wounds that your own mother had. You may have gotten this in utero, which can be often called like karmic or ancestral wounds, right? Um, so, but you'll notice as you as you take a, a look at the things that have been really activated over this last seven months, especially, um, may have something to do with what your mother dealt with and you have been perpetuating in your own life, okay? Now, what's really interesting when I said it, it's a beautiful, harmonious, take a look at it, not to scare you, not to fear this, um, this healing, but in a way that's actually going to move because Venus is helping us out and Venus knows what your desire is. And your desire is to feel fulfilled and purposeful in your life in your own unique way. Again, touching back to that Aquarius energy, right? You being unique, being yourself. It's sort of like rebel, rebellion energy of like, I don't need a Godhead or some system telling me what I need to do. I need to be listening to my own inner guidance. Now, Venus is at the tail end of Leo. We're about to have a new moon in Leo on the 4th of August. Huge, huge part of the story. Why? Because like I said, Venus is helping you to achieve what is, um, what is you know, the most desired for you. 
Venus also rules Libra, which is the South Node. South Node has been working on taking you out of your comfort zones in order to achieve your destiny. Um, and so, but Venus is also connected to the ruling planet of your, um, your money and your love. Okay. Venus rules both. So when we are in love with our life, when we are in harmony with our own purpose, okay, how, where we feel the spark of life, the, where we feel the spark of joy, where we feel satisfied in our life, it is always easier to become financially, you know, more well off and be, be more open to love and loving relationships in our life. Okay. So we have this huge love element that is supporting this final healing of our wound. Now, typically somebody would have to wait 50 years for Chiron to orbit and have a return in our life. It returns every 50 years. So usually only once in a lifetime, but you may not be 50. Yeah. I'm, you know, chances are most of you are not 50 years old watching this video. Some of you may be right around there, but we're, ha we're able to really allow this wound to become our greatest medicine, our greatest purpose because um because of this retrograde and with pluto and this final release of it and not have to wait until that space and time when we are right around 50 years old so this is miraculous this is huge this is a really big deal so what i want to do is i want to dive into the tarot with each one of you and find out what that overlighting energy looks like for you so you you may or may not be familiar with your with your natal chart a lot of people don't have um, the information of what time they were born. So, um, so that makes it difficult to, to get a full picture of your natal chart. So let's, let's rely on another tool to find out what is going to be activated within you in order to create this different storyline. You literally are able to rewrite the story of your life and make a huge quantum leap and shift upwards towards the things that you have desired for yourself, okay? So let's find out which, with each sign, I would like for you to, if you're interested, look at, oh, I'm so sorry. See, again, glad I didn't do this 12 times. With Venus being in Leo, Leo, the sun, right? Okay, Leo is the, is the Leo sign is the sun. We're looking at father, father figure and your exterior um, or yeah, exterior material world. You and the exter external, I'm saying that right. You and your external world. Okay. So now you could be looking at, so what we have the, the opportunity here for again is now not only healing a wound that had been created within our mother um, relationship, we also have the ability to heal a wound within our father relationship because father, father figure, and you and your external world. Okay. So whatever that looks like for you, we all have these feminine and masculine energies within us. Every one of us does. Every one of us has some sort of, of a relationship, whether they were involved in our life or not with father, mother, mother figures, either how you have been that for other people, how other people have been that for you. And now it is time for us to be able to do that for ourselves. Again, we are rising to be independent, okay? But have interdependent relationships because again, Pluto and Aquarius setting the tone for this generation is all about each one of us being able to self-resource for us to be able to soothe ourselves and give ourselves what we need in order to be strong, the strength within the collective, okay? We're not leaning on exter external information. We're not leaning on other people to give us our answers, to give us our validation. We are able to now self-resource what we need by healing these wounds once and for all and being able to show up in a very authentic way, strong, and, and be able to have harmonious relationships with those who we are working with, those we are engaging with in our own personal life, okay? So again, this is a very significant next six months, and it was go it is going to be much easier for you to be able to release than you probably suspected. So along with looking at the overlighting energies for each one of you in your sign, um, I will also pull cards, a card or cards, and usually ends up being cards, right? 
um, cards for the final outcome. What will the final outcome at the end of this six months or as this energy purges from your field, what will that look like for you? What is that final outcome? And um, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to be significant for each one of us. So um, I hope that was helpful and not confusing um, to be able to draw those parallels from the mythology, which really explains, um, personifies explaining um, energies. That's what the mythology does, is it gives us some some insight to um, the energies through personifying or, or having people or gods. They're not really, you know, I guess a person, right? A person being able to hold the energies. Uh, so again, let's not continue going on here again. I hope that was very helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into the cards for each one of you. One more thing. <laughs> okay. One more thing. Um, so I have started to say, I wanted you guys to watch for your son because that is going to be your, um, uh, like I said, father figure, father in masculine energy and you in your external world. And your purpose, okay, this is um, this is very connected to what propels you forward, what keeps you moving in this life, okay? Um, watch for your rising if you have that information, and um, that is going to be your whole self, okay? And watch for your moon, because that, again, this is your mother, mother figure, but also the inner workings of you, how your mind works, how you think about things, um, the things that you eat, um, and, and taking in your home. Um, so think inward for, uh, for your moon. Okay. That's what that is. It's, it's the, what's going on that everybody isn't necessarily seeing what's going on inside of you, how you process things is going to be your moon. It's also a really great idea for you to watch for your Venus as well, because Venus is an active part of this, right? Um, and Venus is your love, like love and money. Um, and she, um, she, but, but a lot of times people will watch their Venus for for not only money, but for um, how people attract to them, what type of people they attract, that kind of thing. So you can, you know, take the information and apply it to which one of these um, areas of your life or your chart, if you do have that information. Also, if you are interested in not um, having to wait for the content to be released throughout the week, um, to be able to get all of these, um, please join my Patreon community and you will have access to all of the videos um, on Mondays. And, um, and you won't have to wait, um, to, to watch for each one of those placements in your life. Or if you're wanting to watch, cross watch for somebody who is significant for you, um, that's always very helpful for navigating your life as well. So, okay, now let's begin. Okay, Taurus, let's dive into what these energies are going to look like for you. Uh, love. Okay. An offer. Typically as to have love, look at all those red candles. Um, look at that five of, excuse me. Yes, five of wands, okay? Five of wands. Now, if you watch my readings, you know I love fives because they are both conflict and liberation. So once you break free, you're like, you never, sometimes you just feel like you're just shaken up on the inside and you're kind of rattling and you're just, things are, you know, conflictual in nature, either internally or the way that you're engaging with other people. And then all of a sudden you have that breakthrough and you're like, oh, okay, now this is what was going on. This is why I had felt like that. And then, that's what this five of wands, all the fives are talking about. And wands is specific to your external world, your opportunities, um, your creativity. We have the um, Knight of Cups, okay, right here, which is about passion and receiving something, an offer that has to do with your passions. Okay, so I love those two together for you. We're starting off pretty strong here for you, Taurus. Okay, and we have... The Queen of Wands. Okay. All right. And what's at the bottom of the deck for you? Ace of Wands. Stop it. You guys. Oh my gosh. Are you incredible or what? Okay. So what this is looking like for you is beginning to accept an offer of this opportunity, this new opportunity in your life. Okay. So and breaking free from that contention, inside contention. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to, of course, go deeper. I love to go deeper until we get the full story. And I feel like this sort of like break in the story, like, oh, like, you know, like I said, that moment of enlightenment. And then um, and then we'll get the final outcome for you. Okay. So let's get for a minimum of two cards for each of these three. This is for you. 
<laughs> yeah. So queens are cardinal energy. So they're initiators, initiating something for you that has to do with your creativity and an opportunity of what work, um, well, sp stable finances showing up in your ex uh, ex external world, showing up in your physical world. Wow. <laughs> wow, you guys. So does your Chiron wound have to do with, uh, with creating something financially prosperous? Okay. And now we have the page of swords, which is fresh new information. I like that. Being able to see things from a clear, clear lens. Looks like we have two more. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. We got, we have another five, um, as a clarifier for this. Okay. So, um, this is, this is Gemini. We have Cancer and we have Aquarius. So, like I said, this page of swords is fresh new information or a fresh new perspective. Okay. The chariot is where you're ready to move. You're ready to go forward. Either this is about like, buying something new for yourself like a new car or you are moving household or you are moving job or you are moving somewhere and you literally are seeing it for yourself okay and then what is this conflict there's a conflict about engaging with other people this could be competition um this could be learning something new um and you know sometimes that's that's trial uh, it can be a very trying or or um, a period of trial for us as we're learning something new um, from other people is creating a growth within us is what that challenge is doing. Here's this five of swords. Five of swords is where you have to break away and you have to make some very independent decisions. You have to decide for yourself based on internal navigation, internal knowledge. Okay. You're taking the wisdom. You're taking the information that you have. You are breaking away from a way that you normally would have done things or with people that you normally would have engaged in are engaged with or gotten information from and you're having to go out independently okay making this decision for yourself of where you're going what you're buying what you're doing okay this offer i love this offer has to do with stable finances and it has to do with working with people where you are respected and um you're building something this is a very strong building energy okay this is Taurus. This is you. This is where you have built something that is stable financially. We have the Page of Wands with the Queen of Wands. So the Page of Wands is where you're going to explore something that you already know. Also new information. You're gaining new information on an opportunity. Okay, on an opportunity. So is this creating a conflict in your home environment? So do you feel conflicted between moving forward with the things that you have created and want for yourself and what where you want your life to go and how it impacts your family life? Because it looks like this, con this we have another five of... Do you feel conflicted between, um, between work and home? Do you feel conflicted between um, a, um, what you want to do and what appears to be what's stable for you in your, in your home? So you're having to make a strong decision around accepting something here and being able to move forward with what's best for you. That's I can see how that would be very difficult and equally very liberating and healing for you to be able to choose what's best for you, uh, Taurus, versus what's best for everyone involved in your home life or where you've been comfortable, where you have felt emotionally supported um, and wanted to be emotionally supportive and, and care for others as well. So let's see, going out into the world, feeling sad about it, disappointment, okay? Are you disappointed in... Um, Hmm. Home again. Hmm. The chariot again. Page of cups. We have, we have three pages on the table. Page of knowledge. Fresh information. 
the page of cups, new um, emotional insight, or this is also um, creative insight, right? Where you're being creative in nature. Um, where you're using your imagination. And then we have the page of wands where you're acting on that. It's adventurous energy. Tell me about that five of cups. I would, the, one, the ones I'm most interested in here is the five of cups, page of cups, and this six of cups is pretty strong too. Okay, so the chariot is re reiterating, you're going somewhere, you're doing something big or out in the world. The world here is saying, yeah, it's going to be big. You're going out into the world. We know that your that Pluto is in your 10th house of going out into the world, fame, fortune, um, career. Where is that taking you to be visible to the external world? So well, tell me about the five of cups. Tell me about that. How many fives do we have on the table? Three fives, five of wands, five of wands again, and five of cups. This could be very much suggest that you're making up the conflict. So it's more, it feels more conflictual to you than it actually is. That, that's coming through. Like you have to make a choice. I had one card flip over here and it is. Again, it's in your head. This torment is in your mind. It's your thinking. This is a sword. This is knowledge. This is truth. This is the way that you're thinking. So maybe you did receive a truth that was very painful in nature and you can now not unknow that. Or the way that you're thinking about this situation is more painful than it actually is, which also is is prevalent here. Tell me more about that, that five of cups. Tell me more about that five of cups. You're going to have to go. You have to go. You have to go. <laughs> Is, that, is it really uncomfortable for you? Either you're having to walk away from where you've lived, walk away from what um, people that you have known and cared about, walk away from a relationship. You are literally having to walk away from something that may have been very significant to you, okay? So, because that night is going. That night is going to grab a hold of life. Okay, I want to know more about the Six of Cups. That's what I want to know. Tell me about that Six of Cups. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm, I'm not going to stop there, but that is... I'm going to take that. So nine of cups, this is wishes fulfilled. This is you in alignment with all the things you desire and pursuing it. So you have, so it's taking action. I mean, definitely about taking action around what sparks you, what sparks you. It's not hurting, you know, and, and there could be, there could be, there could be this realization that I have to, I cannot go where I need to go in my life, staying where I'm at with the people that I'm at. You could be walking away from people that you have cared about. Okay. You could be walking away from what you have known as home, but you're not going to get to where you need to be and be able to maintain your finance, this offer. Uh, not maintain, take advantage of this this offer. It has everything to do with what you want. Keep going here, just keep going. Swing. More Sagittarius energy, alignment, aligned alignment here with your purpose, your financial stability. You're having to go, go. 
you're making up more conflict than necessary. You think that that conflict is in your home. There's discord in your home potentially. Um, it's not as, it's not as, I just, I just keep getting this pain, this feeling that is not as painful as you are perceiving it. And I think that the pain is, I think that the pain is the resistance towards movement. Honestly, I think that the pain is resistance towards movement and accepting what this full, the full manifestation to come in. So that's what I'm feeling like. Okay. The resistance to movement in order to allow the full manifestation to come in. And when I say full manifestation, it's all the things that you have desired. Okay. Truth of who you are. Absolute truth. And like I said in the beginning, this is Aquarius energy here. Aquarius energy is about you becoming your authentic self. Okay. It is about you self-knowledge. It is about aligning with your own purpose. It is the only king that looks you square in the face because he knows he knows who you are. He knows what you're capable of. He knows the truth. He knows the truth. And when you accept the truth about yourself, it's going to end this anguish, all of the torture that you had been through in your own life. What is that torture about? What is that torture? Tell me about that 10 of swords. I think I think that you are having to mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just keep going. Uh-huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yep. All right. I see it. I see it. I see it. Uh-huh. And it's repeating here and now round work. Okay. All right. Okay. So Taurus, this is, and here's what's at the bottom of the deck, success. I mean, this is literally about success. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is that you have continued to put other people in front of you. Okay. You have been able, you have been continued to put what's best for everybody else, not rocking the boat in your home, not rocking the boat in your relationship. You want to continue to uh, make sure that every decision that you're making is about what's best for somebody else versus you just exploring the options that are coming to you in your life and receiving new options, receiving a brand new opportunity. And I think that it literally takes action on what has sparked your joy. What has sparked your joy? What are you, when you are like in meditation and when you are by yourself and you're in this this happy little place in inside yourself and you're thinking about the things that you really enjoy the things that you like this you know maybe it is a new house maybe it is a new car maybe it is um a new job maybe these kind of things okay and then letting yourself go there as you are inspired to do so okay literally affixing this is the king of cups okay literally fixing your mature emotions on relaxed and calm mental state to receive you're you're like all over the place right you're you're because everything you're doing you keep putting everything into other people now here's the coolest thing about it is because once you align to yourself your true purpose what sparks joy and happiness inside of you you will have more fit with fit, stable finances and stronger, healthier, healthier relationships. Okay. These are people who have known each other for some time. Okay. So it's not, I don't think that you're breaking up with anybody. That's not what this is saying. You're not walking away from, but I feel, I think that you feel like when you align to what you want, you, there's a sense of betrayal to somebody else. And that's what you have to get over. That's what this wound is about is about you being able to simply be you because you enjoy what you're doing and not having to put everybody else into the equation, okay? So what is, let's go ahead and pull, I think from this deck um, is what I'm thinking. And let's find out what the final outcome as you heal this, as you heal this need to care for everybody else first before caring for yourself and being aligned to your intentions and your purpose, what, when you do that, 
when you just, well, I just had a whole bunch drop out. Those are not all for you. What does this final outcome when you heal this wound of taking care of everybody else and figuring them into the equation, the tower? I like that. That is an absolute movement. The magician. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's what's fascinating. Okay. So this tower is like Mars energy. I often see it as Uranus energy too. We have Uranus right here. But let's, let's go back to, to Mars in Gemini. Mars is in Gemini. Happened to make a really strong, enlightened decision. A very strong decision. Okay. So either you are going to really see it for yourself, where you, where you need to place your attention and what is important to you and your personal life and your personal growth and the things that you want to see your life look like. You're making a very strong, enlightened decision. And that is now calling in the power of the magician and blessing your life. Or there will be a, uh, an event that catapults you forward. It will, um, it will change your trajectory to help you begin to see where you need to be. It'll place you. It'll place you in the perfect position to be able to manifest that. Okay. Now, um, let's keep going. So, mm -hmm. seven of cups, imagination, imagination, seven of cups, page of cups and seven of cups. This is where you are starting to percolate on those ideas, those thoughts that Venus is bringing in. Five of pentacles. Now this is a Taurus wound. Five of pentacles. That is where you have connected to others from a wounded place. And you have not been able to expand materially or as financially as possible for yourself. Because of this unworthiness, this low self-image. And that's why you keep trying to lift other people up and take care of everybody else. Is because of that reason right there. The ace of pentacles. So, so this magician is wanting to help you to begin to have the power. What? Of a new financial well-being. Um, and be able to bring that into your physical existence. Financial strength, financial strength, financial strength. Page of Pentacles. I love this. Oh my gosh. What is possible for you financially? What is possible? Because it is going to be strong. It is going to be power. You have the potential here of literally manifesting a significant amount of money. And it could be like, that could be the catastrophic. That could be the catastrophic event, okay? Because Venus, who is your ruling planet, is doing some um, interesting work around your story. I think that she does um, an open square. Again, not an astrologer, but I believe that what uh, Venus is doing is, op is, is um, giving us an open square, which means the ability to rewrite our story with Uranus, Uranus, okay, so like I said, this is this is Mars, like moving quickly on the information that you have and blessing your physical life, okay? Now, with Mars and Gemini, but also, same time, I believe this is strong Uranus energy where it is this moment of like, I can never, ever go back. There's never any going backwards from this moment forward and everything changes. Venus plus Uranus changing everything. Your story around finances is going to change and you are going to receive an enormous amount of money because of that, okay? So it is time for you to choose you, okay? It is time for you to stop fixing everybody else's wounds and um, try to make sure that they are comfortable. Ouch, just hit my knee. This is about you not trying to make sure that everybody else is comfortable. This is about you owning your own strength. This is about you taking that leap forward in a convicted, like a conviction, like it's conviction. I don't want to say convicted way. <laughs> um, this is you in all of your power, in all of your strength, taking action. 
and you have conviction and confidence and stability on your side, okay? So you're about to take a big leap forward in who you are and your financial stability, okay? Your finance, finances are going to increase exponentially. Six of swords is going to be a much more peaceful era in your life, okay? Enormous amount of, of peace compared to mental anguish that you have been through. Simply by choosing a positive narrative around yourself and choosing to align with your spark of joy. All right. One final card for, and I'm going to use this deck. I think so. Okay. So using the gold foil, what I want to see here is the final outcome for uh, Taurus. One final card for Taurus. All right. Okay. It is the eight of wands and eight of cups. The final outcome is eight of cups. You in all of your power, in all of your strength, you pursue your passions independently. You gain independence and you seek things that are um, satisfying and enlightening and enjoyable simply because you want them. Okay. So it's the end of the era of codependency. It is the end of the era of negative self um, talking, um, negative self opinion, self esteem, negative self esteem. The, that era is over. And the eights mean personal power and abundance. That's what eights are about. Okay. So you claim your personal power through pursuing your interests and you are enormously um, abundant in doing so. And it looks like enormously financially abundant. Okay. So you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings by doing this. You're not going to disrupt your home. In fact, your home will literally become stronger for you taking this opportunity of, of pursuing what you love. You have strength of independence in pursuing what you love and are financially blessed for it. I love this for you, Taurus. I hope you love it too. Okay. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again. And uh, just know that I love you and Source adores you.